Okay, Bosa update. Who's ready? You ready? Yeah. Here we go. Um, this is from Ian Rappaport on the Pat McAfee show. How much is Bosa going to command? How high does he get? Does he get Aaron Donald? Does he get highest paid non-QB? Like, what does he get? Uh, and I think that's more of the question than, like, are the 49ers going to pay him? Like, their offer is substantial. And there's been, I know, you know, kind of back and forth. It's going to make a lot of money. It's really just a question of how high and when, you know, Nick Bosa and his agent go, all right, like, this is proper. Okay, there's something interesting in there because we've all had sort of the discussion over the last week or so. There's this who do you blame thing. And, and I know fans, come on, Niners, just pay him. Just give him the money. Give it to him. Come on. And I'm sitting here going, I have no idea who's asking for what. Ian Rappaport says, there's no question he's getting paid. And the 49er offer is, quote, substantial. Um, I don't know what that means. You know, he mentions, is he going to get Aaron Donald? Aaron Donald's the highest paid defensive lineman in the league. Um, higher than any pass rusher, in fact, which is wild because pass rushers are considered more important than the interior lineman. But Aaron Donald's making about 31. T.J. Watt is making 28, and Nick's younger brother, Joey, is making 27. So, I don't know. If that offer is is 31, and uh, Nick is still like, nope, uh, I, does that change your thought that you expressed last week on this at all? No. 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 You would still put it on the Niners? Yes. Okay. I mean, Aaron's making 31 and two-thirds million average annual, so... If Nick Bosa is the best defensive player in football, and he was last year, and he's significantly younger than Aaron Donald, and he is, then you should be starting that baby at 33 minimum in terms of average annual. What if they are? Well, then let's see that. And I don't know if they are. And if I'm Nick, I'm asking for 35, and then we can kind of negotiate down from there. Um, I don't know if you want to negotiate down with Nick. Nick is in. Here's one thing I will submit to you. Nick is in position to, if he and his agent, and I think they will, like they're all professionals here. Nobody's trying to go in there and ruin the whole damn thing. Of course. He wants to play, and they want him to play. If they've sat down and gone, this is what we think we're worth, and it's not ridiculous, he's got every right to just be like, I'll sit here till you meet me. I'll sit here till you meet me. And if it, if it's a little bit down, okay, fine, we, may, maybe we can talk, but... If they have come to a rational decision about what that number should be, Nick has the leverage to just be like, I'll, I'll wait. And I brought this up last week. What if it means, like, forget, because I know fans. Oh, just give them the money. It's not my money. Sure. Okay, but what if it means Brandon Ayuk doesn't get to be on the team next year? The truth. Well, you already answer, freed up money with uh, Trey Lance. Yeah, but but that's a, that's the piece that you needed to free up. Oh, well, that's only five million bucks. Like if yep. if this does, because some people think with or without Trey Lance's money is going to be hard to keep Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel on the same team. And, and you might be right, okay. But if I were to draw an A to B and say, what if Nick Bosa's contract leads to Brandon Ayuk's departure? The unfortunate answer to that question is, oh well, bye, Brandon. Yeah, that's the I, cost I, of, of doing I, business in the National Football League. I hate that. I'm a huge Ayuk fan. A huge Ayuk sure, fan. Sure, we all are. He had a great year, there's no, singular. There's no question who's more replaceable between Nick Bosa and Brandon Ayuk. Right. Nick Bosa is the, let me think about it, best uh, edge rusher in the National Football League. And Brandon Ayuk is the 14th, 18th, 9th, 22nd. Best receiver, depending on how you want to look at it. Even if he was the best receiver, I would argue Nick Bosa is more valuable than Justin Jefferson. Right. We, well, he's, you could talk about value over replacement player. Right. Your ability to vorp a wide receiver and find a guy to come in and do Justin Jeffersonian things is easier than finding somebody to come in and do what Nick Bosa does, without right. a doubt. Uh, on where the contract talks stand as of right now, Ian Rappaport, Pat McAfee Show. They're not there yet, and I don't get the sense they're close at all, so I don't get oh. the sense anything is imminent. But at least they're, you know, it sounds like there's been some level of conversation, I guess. Uh, which is, you know, as there should be, it's like there's been at least some touching base. And I know this probably doesn't make anyone feel better, but, like, there still is a lot of time. I mean, Bosa, I'm sure, keeps himself in unbelievable shape. I don't think oh, he's yeah. going to need a lot of like acclimation yeah. period, you know? So even if he shows up 
you know, five days from now, like I'm sure he'll be ready for the season. He's going to make a lot of money. I, I feel very confident that if he signs a deal, he's going to be the highest paid edge rusher in the NFL. Not imminent, but I do think there are key phrases in here that tell me I, I'm, I'm going to stay over here with my feet up. I'm going to stay over no, here with you, my feet you up. You said after Saturday that you would take your feet down. You you put your own deadline at Saturday. No, I didn't. The Saturday deadline was the trade trade. I didn't say Saturday. For Nick I, Bosa, you no, did. No, the original. And I came back the very next day and said, take it back. He's going to be there by the season. Ah, you flip-flopped on yeah, me. Yeah, because of what I heard everyone say about it. There's key little phrases in there. If If everybody knows he's about to get paid and nobody's freaking out about practice time, um, we know how this game works. You're not going to miss a game check. Why would you do that? Why would the Niners do that? And why would sure. Nick do that? Just, what is the motivation for this to last into the end of next week? I don't know that he, n- no side has that. I just don't see it. So well, I don't. His motivation is to get every last dollar. I think he will. Well, that would be his motivation for letting it, you know, stretch out all the way to the no, deadline. Right. But my point is, is that neither side is motivated for Nick to not play in Pittsburgh at all. Right. Does this affect how much he plays in Pittsburgh if he signs mm. next week on this day, Labor Day? If he ironically comes in on Labor Day and signs and then now he only has six days to get ready, oh. does that affect how much time he actually plays? I'd say no. Yeah, we'll see. If he shows we'll up see. on Friday, it does, of next week. Right. Shows up on Monday and puts in a full week of practice. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wonder. I wonder how this is going to go because now we're down to 13 days until the actual opener, and he's not signed. And we don't have the Trey Lance topic to kick around anymore. We could talk about kicker controversies and cut down day, but after that all goes away tomorrow, you've got a game coming up, and your best defensive player is not on the team. 